What's up my beloved glue sniffers? I'm back and I'm going to build this fossil like thing with trucks. Anyway, this thing is named Axarid and in the Hebrew it means the cruel one. Its miniature in 135th scale is made by Mang. By the way, if these wheels are familiar for you then you are right. Axarid is uh, based on T55 and T54 chassis. Let's see what's inside the box. You can have this vehicle in any color unless it is uh, Israeli gray. Okay, so it's a joke. Uh, the instruction is pretty decent for Mang. It's uh, pretty informative and it has a lovely background which explains uh, what we're going to build. The hole is in two pieces which will be sandwiched together. The model has a reasonable amount of parts and lovely details. Because it's meant it should go together without any problems. The plastic is pretty chunky and hard so um, we will have to process it a little bit longer than usual with other models. We have also a towing cable and a chunky heavy sheet of photo edge element. Unfortunately, we are also greeted with rubber band tracks, which are, you know, out of details and have some flash. So I will think if I should replace them anyway later. So it's time for the first cat. As I already mentioned, the plastic is really hard and chunky. So um, take some time to process parts and avoid any fitting issues later. Only few parts have ejection pin marks and some flash, so remove it, it's not very difficult. Um, only a couple swipes of sanding file or, or um, a little putty, it is enough to, to, to get rid of them. Building the suspension you have to mind the correct part order, otherwise you may fall into some trouble while assembling suspension arms. However the bottom side of suspension arms will be hidden by uh, wheels and trucks. I decided to fill the uh, ejection pin marks with putty uh, and remove them later just in case they would be visible. To add to the model my personal touch I decided to bend fenders. Um, just to replicate some damage. The Axarid is offered by Meng in two versions. The later one is with full interior while the early one, which I built right now, is without interior. But we have some, you know, um, leftovers of the interior or some um, entry level details of, of the interior. If you wanted, for example, to build a fighting compartment, open it or uh, build a diorama. It's a really nice touch because with some um, scratch build details you may achieve a really nice effect. The fit is very good so far and parts are falling together without any problems. Now it's time for kudos for Meng. Wheels don't have any seam lines and they are very easy to cut out of sprues thanks to the clever design. Of course, we are greeted also with uh, mighty poly caps to uh, glue inside wheels. Thanks to it, we can take them off while building and painting. The alignment is so perfect. Now, um, let's consider what to do with uh, these ugly rubber band tracks. As I mentioned earlier, uh, they are flashy and with very little of details. 
In the end I decided to replace them with mini art set dedicated for T54, T55 and T62 tanks. It's a set of separate link tracks which are in one pieces. They are lovely detailed and there shouldn't be any problems with its assembly. Of course once you cut them out of spruce. And this, along with its processing, may take some time. Okay, it looks like a Sisyphic work, but uh, it went quite smooth. You know, it's like a filleting a fish. If you know how to do this, it turns out to be quick and a nice job. So play your favorite music or podcast and uh, prepare for a smooth job. The fit is lovely and parts hold themselves together without any glue. Once I form a line of 87 track links, I took the Tamiya thin cement to glue them together and I waited about 5 minutes uh, once the uh, bond will be a little bit stronger but still flexible and started wrapping uh, tracks around the suspension. There's very little of sag with T54 and T55 uh, tracks, so don't go crazy with this, it's not JS2. Once I formed the track lines I left them for over the night to get dry and um, to form uh, a strong bond with the glue. Once I finished with tracks, I sandwiched uh, the whole parts, which go together without any problems. Now let's talk about texturing. Um, there are some different uh, referential pictures of Axarid which show uh, um, that this vehicle is uh, either mm, pretty neat and um, polished while uh, some other uh, units are um, pretty textured. It's probably due to various batches of these vehicles. So I decided to add some textures but not to go crazy with them. The first stage was uh, adding some flame cuts on the upper half section. It's not a rocket science, I just uh, sanded uh, some edges of, of uh, the hull um, to prepare for flame cuts. Please only mind that in the end you will uh, be left with plenty of dust. When I was happy with flattening the surface with the file, I took a scalpel and started slashing the surface. Please mind that it's a modern vehicle, so um, there won't be any rough steel textures, just some uh, gentle nuances of uh, flame cuts.
I also filled the two narrow gaps in the rear vehicle section. Uh, these were only two fitting issues with the model, so it means that the Manx engineering is really good. I used the black CA glue which is also a perfect filler because it doesn't shrink. Once the glue got dried I took a debonder and removed its excess from the surface. I also scratch builded uh, one handle which uh, plastic equivalent was lost by me. Okay, shame on me. Nice rhyme. That was pathetic. Small grenade launchers also required some work but it was a piece of cake comparing to the fitting issues you may face with uh, other models. The second stage of texturing was adding welds. I took Tamiya epoxy patty, rolled into a sausage uh, and added some flour. Uh, the flour was not for uh, baking but uh, for avoid the patty sticking to fingers and the uh, surface. Once it was applied, I took scalpel and replicated flame cuts. It was a very relaxing work and the effect is very nice. The model looks heavier, more like armored vehicle. Yeah, okay, uh, it's an obvious, obvious sense. Uh, but uh, it's the beauty of armored models. You may add some textures, making them uh, very uh, your own. Uh, while keeping the historical accuracy, just look at these nicely molded machine guns. The only thing to upgrade them was to drill uh, holes in their barrels. Photo etched parts are extremely thick. I've never met anything like this. But there's a very positive aspect of this factor because they are not fragile. Unfortunately, the manual confuses uh, part numbers. Please be cautious while uh, building this part of the vehicle. Before gluing uh, metal parts uh, to the model, I primed them with Mr. Uh, metal Primer. It will be very helpful while painting, because uh, paint uh, doesn't stick well to metal surfaces. It doesn't matter uh, if you use enamels, lacquers or acrylics. The primer was thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner, which gave a very nice and smooth surface. I also replaced stock towing cables which were pretty ugly and unrealistic with the one from Aber.
It only left me to add some minor details, remove the super glue excess and the vehicle was uh, assembled. I decided to add some damage to the vehicle and replicate some scratch on the left side. It will be marked while uh, painting and chipping, but um, at this time uh, the uh, registration plate uh, will be bent and uh, the towing cable mounting will be removed. But wait, I was missing something. Did I mention that the Israelis uh, use uh, Axarids as mules? Yes, because it's the main purpose of this vehicle, to deliver uh, soldiers on the front line. You can notice Axarids uh, being loaded with stowage outside. The model hasn't any stowage, uh, except of this one fuel can that was generously added to the set. Thank you, Meng. I had to figure out something. Resin sets dedicated for IDF forces with equipment are beautiful but from the other hand they are unreasonably expensive. For me, a person who doesn't build often uh, modern vehicles, uh, it's not a good investment. I had to improvise. But wait... Uh, isn't it uh, this old set dedicated for the US forces? Yes it is. The Tamiya set is so old and so ugly with flashy parts with seam lines and uh, soapy uh, details but um, it's a very reasonable alternative it costs about ten dollars and has everything i needed to improvise before creating anything i had to clean out all parts from this set and remove all inscriptions or signs which may suggest it's uh, the set of the US Army equipment. My idea is to create a, something like a blob of uh, the stowage which will be wrapped with tarps. Thanks to it, about 90% of uh, the stowage won't be visible. To create a tarp, I dissolved a PVA glue in water. Then I took two pieces of paper and soaked it into this mixture. Once they were soaked, I wrapped them around the stowage. I also glued backpacks to the rear side of the vehicle. They will be covered with a tarp. I will put some canisters inside. I haven't figured out how much stowage stuff I want to add to the model, so please not to be surprised with the final effect. As you might have spotted at the beginning of the video, I have started with my Patreon website and I will be honored if you decide to support of my channel. Link in the video description. In a reward, you will be granted with an access to photos of my previous models. Please also not to hesitate to express your opinion about the model, like or dislike the video, along with subscribing to my channel with hitting the bell icon next to the subscription button. Then YouTube will gently alert you once I upload the next video. In the next part, I will paint the model along with the storage. Maybe I will manage to film chipping with some initial weathering, who knows. In the meantime, thank you for watching and let the good fitting be with you.